So you want a greenhouse or a polytunnel in your garden? Which one to go for? They both have great qualities. I'll just point out a few and help you to make up your mind. For example, greenhouse, well, this is a particularly beautiful one. I was going for beauty as well as value. Wooden structures are more expensive. Uh, to give you an idea, this one was over £6,000 when I bought it six years ago. It's made of cedar, which means it doesn't need any oiling or maintenance. The wood endures. It just goes a silver colour. And it's toughened glass, so it should resist <laughs> footballs and things if you had that. But it's on a base, and that is one of the snags of a greenhouse. Um, they don't just float in the garden, they need footings and the builder dug out a trench put concrete in and in fact it's a feature of this garden because I didn't realize it when I moved here but this had been a nursery in the 1970s and there are a lot of like this line here actually there are a lot of lines in the grass which became very visible this dry summer where all the concrete still is basically so they leave a footprint um, other than that is glass and wood compared to the polytunnel which is in that case, that polytunnel, it's simply hoops banged into the ground. Nothing else, no other footings or stuff holding it in place, except I dug a trench. This is the type of polytunnel where the polythene's buried in the soil. And that's cheaper and actually in many ways better. This seems crazy, but here I am encouraging you to dig because you can get polytunnels which are attached to a base at ground level and you don't have to dig. So if you're, if you're in a garden where you, near a hedge or something you can't dig, well fair enough. Here though it's actually a lot easier and simpler and more reliable to bury the polythene because that's what holds it in place basically. We get some strong winds here and it's the polythene being buried in soil, all the weight of soil on that edge of polythene going into the trench which is about that deep and that holds the whole structure in place. So it's nothing to do with concrete or footings or anything like that. And they're very easy then to move. I brought that one from my previous garden, in fact. So they're kind of just like a very large temporary cloche, if you like. Whereas this is kind of more like a, a building. And let's have a look inside just to see one or two of the things you can do in here. There are probably two main differences between greenhouse and polytunnel. One is light and one is warmth. So in theory, at least, this greenhouse should admit more light. That's what I thought before I bought it. And I wasn't really considering actually the density or thickness rather of these, the wooden roof. So that's one factor of the wooden greenhouse because of all this wood that actually reduces the light emissions a bit. Uh, but glass itself lets in very nearly all light. I think the figures around 99%. So that's where aluminium Greenhouses with very thin frames of, of metal um, are very good for letting in maximum light. And light is important, particularly if you're doing winter growing, like these winter salads, which we planted just two days ago, because this is October now, it's change over time, and we're switching from summer crops, like these tomatoes. This is country taste, by the way, that's a, a beef variety of tomato, and the very last few ripening, and we're just about to take these plants out. And then it's winter salads, which are going to crop in here all winter. And for these winter salads, at a high latitude like we are, 51 north, every bit of light is precious. So I actually find that because of all the wood I've got in my greenhouse, the growth in here is not quite as good in terms of leaf colour as it is in the polytunnel. The polytunnel polythene is a bit opaque and it lets in that grade of polythene lets in something like 92% of light, but that's still pretty good. And it does give a nice result. But one thing the glass does that the polythene won't is keep a bit of warmth in. So in here, at night particularly is when I notice it, this holds onto a bit more of the warmth. And it's surprising what a difference that can make to plants, particularly if they're heat loving plants. Like look at these aubergines, the very last ones we're about to harvest. A wonderful variety called black pearl. It's actually on a grafted rootstock as well, which gives it a bit more vigor a very worthwhile investment. You buy a plug plant, a grafted aubergine plant in April, then I pot it on and plant it here. That was planted mid-May and we're now mid-October, so it's five months. 
you can see we've separated out so two stems from the one plant and also deleafing as we go up and these are the working leaves that are doing all the hard work and getting nice crop and this plant's probably given a good four kilos of aubergines in its life cycle of three months of harvest is really impressive but also what I do in the greenhouse is nearly all the propagation that happens at homemakers which is a lot because we're Every plant in the garden starts its life in here with the exception of carrots and parsnips. And they all start life here in these small module trays. And um, that's the variety of winter salads, for example, with a few left over from our planting in here in the polysilum. We're gonna put some outside. Uh, but I find in here, it's just a little bit more reliable. And when I have a hotbed there in the early spring to when every bit of warmth is precious for germinating those seeds and keeping them growing, that the warmth is a bit more contained in here. It doesn't, the hot bed doesn't heat the greenhouse per se, but it, the greenhouse structure just holds a bit more of the warmth of the hot bed close to these seedling plants. So it just, I get a bit of value from it that way. But the relative cost of this one, including the footings came to 9,000 pounds and the polytunnel around 1,300 pounds. You can see that really that's a bit of a no brainer to, if, if you only had one and you're not worried quite so much about how it looks to have a polytunnel. And let's just go and have a quick look at the polytunnel just to see what's going on in there. This polytunnel came from my previous garden, so we, we simply pulled the polythene out. We couldn't reuse it, sadly. Uh, it was recycled, but we brought the structure, put it up in freezing cold weather in January 2013, so that's five and a half years ago now, that's, it's now October, and the side, the polythene's buried in, and so it's the same plastic, and I didn't actually put any of the heat resistant white tape on the hoops. I know you're meant to, but I've never found it makes that much difference, and this polythene is still good. I've, usually for me, it lasts about seven years, and then you do indeed have to, in this case, dig out the trench, um, take all this off and unscrew it from the door frames and start again with a new sheet of polythene, which for a structure this size costs about 150, maybe 200 pounds. Normal polythene, um, no, nothing fancy, not anti-condensation or anything. One thing we do though is we, we keep it clean. So we, two people tie a double sheet together on a rainy day, preferably <laughs> in the autumn is good before winter person on either side and you're pulling against each other with this wet sheet and that removes it's not too bad this year because we've had dry summer I think but you often get a lot of grey or green algae and stuff building up on the polythene going back to what I was saying the greenhouse about light levels and I think you can feel how light it is in here this afternoon for example we're low light levels at the moment it's two only two months to the winter solstice the sun has come out of it, it must be said, but it's a lovely diffuse light. And I do find that plants grow really well from that point of view in here. It's more perhaps the cold nights that set them back a bit. But you can see from that lovely tomato there, it's not dissimilar actually to the one that we just saw in the greenhouse. Same variety, country taste, um, nearest to me, a different one further away. So that's just about to come out and everything else is the winter salad, which has recently gone in. And Two more things I would mention. One is the sides. Because this is an old polytunnel dating 16 years old, it just predated, unfortunately, the, the more modern design, which goes one meter, roughly three feet upwards, vertically from the ground. It just gives you more room when you're working on a side bed. So go for that as far as you can, if available. And the other thing is you can get them in any size, pretty much. This one is 18 feet by 30 you can get very small polytunnels, six by 10, two meters by three, something like that. So many choices. And finally, just on ventilation, you can see I've got a system of four panels in the door frame. I find that that gives me good flexibility. And normally I leave the bottom panel in all the time. I can get enough airflow just by taking out a top panel or two, but usually only one. But what I do have is a, a gap at the top. And that gap means that in the winter, 
you don't need to come out every day and open and close because that's enough air coming through for say these winter salads. So a bit of air is always good. Don't ever with a structure like this, try and seal it all up. Keep some air flow all the time, whether it's greenhouse or polytunnel. Um, these possibly even more, they can get very humid in here somehow because um, it is literally a sealed in <laughs> sort of total enclosure. Um, and therefore you do want to look to have a little bit of opening, preferably either end. And I find that with these winter salads, which are very susceptible to mildew actually, that is enough that, you know, we can go away on a holiday in winter and, and just leave it all sealed up, which is good because that resists the wind more, uh, but with enough airflow to keep these plants healthy. And just finally, one little thing I must mention is frost because it's sometimes assumed by people who have, perhaps haven't tried it that a structure like this might keep frost out and <laughs> they don't really, particularly in winter because the sun's not strong in the day, December, January particularly. Um, so it never really gets warm in the day. It warms a bit, but the nights are then very long. And because there's no air movement in here, it can sometimes get colder in a polytunnel than outside in the garden. You know, like minus 11 in here, minus 10 out there kind of difference. So that doesn't matter for these winter salads, they're very frost resistant, but you wouldn't be trying to grow, say tomato all winter long in a polytunnel. No, it's not, no, not in a northern or deep southern climate where you get frost because this doesn't keep the frost out. But what it does is in any little bit of bright sun, say, from February to November, not so much in midwinter, it really does warm up quite quickly in here. And that's the big value of them and keeping the weather off. So for the 1,300 pound, whatever that costs, that's good value. And we, we can take over 2,000 pounds worth of salad out of here in a winter. It's a lot of hours put in, it's not like free, but it gives you an idea of how much you can produce in winter months. The, a structure like this is really valuable in the winter as much as in the summer. It's a four season um, apparel to have in your garden.